Welcome back to the ninth part in this series in the Content Feed application, and in this one we're going to go over, as I said in the last video, trying to serve an image uh, in development uh, through the API itself. So at the moment you can see we left off with this this front end which has placeholder at the moment but really we want to replace that with our own image that has been uploaded uh, to our our server, our backend server which is serving our JSON API so that we can see a real image uh, that has previously been uploaded in our front end. So for now we're just going to focus on the back end part of the API that we're building. So I'm going to go back over to the back end, which is localhost 8000 slash API slash item, and I've got my Django server running as well. So what I want to do now is I want to pretty much add a uh, an image field here to each of these objects in this in this list, and I want the value of it of this image field to be a link to that image. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the image field to our model that we want to store the data in. So I'm going to go to my models and I'm just going to add another field here. I'm just going to call it image and I'm going to set that equal to models dot image field. And what I need to do is I need to set the upload uh, directory where I want the image to be placed. So if I just say upload to, and that's equal to, uh, let's just say images. So this is just a folder which is going to be created uh, in the file system uh, in some place, which we'll determine later. And instead of storing the database like you'd expect, because this is a model of the item, you could think of it like the item table in the database, but because Django is clever, it knows that an image isn't really supposed to go in the database. It's actually better to store it in the in the file system. And so, for that reason, we we can put an image field here, and then Django is clever enough to figure out that the image shouldn't be going in the database. But thanks to this upload too, it knows it it knows it needs to create a folder called images uh, somewhere, which will tell it to will tell it to put that folder somewhere, and. Then once I've done that, I need to also, uh, you know, make migrations. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So if I do Django admin, and I'm going to do make migrations, and it's asking me to provide a default because we haven't set a default here. And so because I've got two objects in the database which don't have an image associated with them, I'm just going to set a default now, and I'm just going to set an empty string just to say that um, basically, the API is just going to serve null. It's not a, an image, so it, it just can't serve that as a link to that image, if that makes sense. So that should be fine. Um, it means that all the existing rows, although they don't have an image, they they also, you know, we, we can still apply that migration to the database. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do, instead of Django admin make migrations, I'll do migrate. And now you can see that's sort of migrated. So we've got that in our database now, or well, it's been applied to our database, but really it doesn't actually make much difference to the database table itself. Um, what I want to do also is add it to the serializer for that model. So remember we've got uh, ID, title, and description, but because we've added image, I also want to go and stick image uh, as part of that 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 JSON response, so that's what that's for. Let's go back to the browser, and if I see, if I, if I refresh this, we should see. So now we've got image, and as as I expected, you can see we've got another image here, uh, which is what we'd expect. But this is this is null, as as we didn't have an image associated with it. If we scroll down, let's let's just create a test uh, images content content item. Um, this is a test, and I'm going to upload an image using this field that, that is provided for us. And let's just upload a thumbnail to this video, and let's post that. So now you can see we've got a link, uh, which is brilliant, this is what we'd expect. This is actually giving us the uh, place where the image is located, and but if we click on that link, you can see that it's it's actually broken, it doesn't know where to find it. And that's because this URL, this doesn't actually exist yet. So what we need to do is we need to add those URLs to the URLs that we already have defined. And Django is actually quite helpful. It, it, it makes us able to do that quite easily. But we need to define a couple of settings, and then we need to make a small change to the URL config as well. 
So the settings that I want to define are going to dictate, as I sort of alluded to earlier, where the folder is going to be created on the file system. Now if you notice, by default it has actually created an images folder and although we haven't specified exactly where where that where we wanted that folder to go, it's just sort of assumed that it wants it kind of in this root directory um, right here in our project. Now the couple of settings that I need are actually to do with media files. This is what they're called. If you use it, upload a file in Django, that's called a media media file, a bit like we have static files for static assets and things. Uh, we also have media files for files that the users can upload and and sort of have served, served back to them as well. So I'm going to say, I'm just going to come down and create a little section in settings here. I'm going to say media URL and I'm going to set that equal to uh, just media. And what this does is it basically uh, is going to modify this URL so that the the, the actual URL which we'll end up serving is going to be API item slash media slash images and then the the name of the file in this case. So that that's what that does. That just changes the URL slightly. And I also want to specify a media root. Now the media root itself is actually where we want the the folder for those those uploaded files to be located. Now if you're fancy, this could be anything like an an S3 bucket, for example, on S3, which is something you might want to consider doing in production. But for this, I just want to, uh, you know, ser serving it from my my current directory is absolutely fine. So I'm going to make this a path, and I'm going to use join to do that. So s dot path dot join. It's just a good way of concatenating two strings that happen to be paths. And I'm going to say the os dot path dot name. Uh, of the base directory for this project which is defined up above uh, if we actually go to that we can have a look at what that is it's right at the top I think uh, base directory that's basically our project folder and if we come back down you can see we, we can actually say that we want this in the uh, content feed folder and I say content feed because this is the the folder right at the top here uh, so Baster is sort of giving us the path to the the actual project itself and then content feed says the actual project that we want the folder to be located in and I'm, I'm just saying that uh, so that we know where to point the URLs when we add the URLs to the, conf to, to the URL config so that means it points to the folder that already exists which means that it should be able to find it when we go to that URL so the final thing that I need to do is I need to go to the URLs and on the URLs, I don't actually have to define any custom URL, but I do need to add add on a little bit so that Django can do it for us. And that's, uh, I'm going to use a thing called static. So we need to import a couple things from Django. So let's import static, like I mentioned, from django.conf.urls.static. We're going to import a static function. And the other thing that I want to import is obviously because we are defining settings in our settings.py we also need to refer to those settings uh, as, you, as you're going to see in a minute so I'm going to import uh, from django.conf import settings and that's going to give us access to the settings file like we would be able to do anywhere else in our project so I'm going to say in addition to the URLs we've got defined I'm going to add the URLs for all the all the static stuff, uh, but in this case media files, and I'm actually going to specify the media root. So as I mentioned before, we defined the the media URL to ser to serve static uh, files from. So I'm going to specify that uh, as the first parameter. So that's saying I want to serve all the static files from the media the the media path in in the URLs, and then I want to chuck the the rest of the URL sort of on the end of that. And I'm also going to specify the document root. Um, this isn't really necessary because it defaults to the same place anyway, but if you want to specify anything other than the actual default, um, it's, it's always good to specify the document root. And I like to do it anyway just because it's more explicit. So let's, go, let's also add the document root. And that's going to be equal to the uh, settings, the other setting we defined. So media root. So let's try that now. If we go back to the API and uh, resend a GET request, 
Uh, it looks like my server might have some sort of error. I'm just going to rerun that server. So if I resend that get request, uh, we should be able to see now that, so we've got this, this link, and as you can see, instead of just being uh, API item images, which wasn't found, we've now got forward slash media slash images slash the name of that image. So if I click on that, we can see we've now actually got that served image uh, directly from a link within our API response. So in the next video, we're just going to hook this up to the front end so that we can actually see these images that have been uploaded uh, in the back end, and uh, we should be able to then see them in the front end.